Fun fact, I originally made this prototype when Ruin dropped, but then just didn't make a video on it. I'd like to thank Help Wanted 2 for making it surprisingly relevant again. This is going to be running in Godot 4.1.3, but the same principles could apply to other versions, or even other software provided the fact that they support multiple layers for visuals and physics. That should include most 3D software in current year. Anyway, your time is precious and so is mine, so let's make this quick. As you may have noticed from the visuals, the effect consists of a few simple parts. In the most logical order, they are an animation for toggling the mask, a spooky reverb when we wear the mask, three categories of visuals, masked, unmasked, and common, three sets of collision boxes, masked, unmasked, and common, and a symbol showing if we can toggle the mask at all. Before implementing any of these, you'll need to set up a scene. This one just consists of a basic character controller, a world environment node, and some tiles from Kenny Game Assets 1, linked in the description. I trust that you can either handle all of that on your own, or find the relevant tutorials. If we want a sci-fi mask to reveal the secrets of the mystical AR world, the first thing that we'll need is the ability to put on and take off the mask. Start with a simple player that can move and look around. Next, we'll need a few variables to store how much we want to tilt our head, whether we can control our character, and whether we're in the AR world or not. This first bit disables control and switches between the AR world and the real world. We'll do more with this later. This isn't necessary, but it certainly looks less stiff if we add it. The next bit plays an animation to move the mask in front of our face, wait, then move it out of the way. This if statement prevents us from swinging more than 180 degrees. Rotation can be weird. The last bit tilts us back, re-enables controls, and updates the label in the top left. Now we have a player that can walk around and switch which world they're in, but it doesn't actually do anything. For example, there is a suspiciously AR-looking obstacle here that I still cannot pass. One of the simplest things to add when we're setting up an atmosphere is sound, so let's add a few. We'll add a background track for both the AR world and the real world. In addition to that, we'll add footsteps and a quick sound effect to let the player know that they've changed worlds. I've added a simple head bob script and made it call a footstep function every time it hits a low point. It also adjusts the pitch a random amount to avoid it getting too repetitive. Finally, it pans to either ear to simulate that we have two feet instead of one center one. We can also alternate between the AR and real world background tracks in our swap worlds function from earlier. At the same time, you can play the switching sound. I have an audio bus set up for the real world and the AR world. For the reverb effect, I just feed the sound effect bus into the AR bus, which already has the reverb effect applied. The most obvious change that the Vanny mask imparts is on the visuals. This can largely be broken into two categories, objects that only show up in one mode and general lighting. In Godot, both of these are quite simple. The camera only shows meshes with visual layers matching its call mask. Simply put, you can define a layer for the things that are always visible, and the things that are only visible in the AR world or the real world. From there, you can just flip the call mask's bits to show what you'd like when the mask switches. If you set the mask to be in the real world, it'll disappear as if you're wearing it. I alternate between the world environments by storing them in a two-element array and using the call mask we just set as the index. This ensures that they always match. To tie together the swap, you should obscure the screen for a moment so the player doesn't just see a bunch of assets appear and disappear. I implemented this as an animation that plays between the mask coming up and dropping down. With this much feedback, we can also remove the label in the top left. A major mechanic in Ruin is navigating all the paths that are blocked in either the real or AR world. As luck would have it, setting that up is nearly identical to what we did for the objects that only show up in one world. When switching the camera's call mask, simply change the player's collision mask as well. Just like in the visuals, you'll need colliders in your scene to be on a layer for the real world, the AR world, or both. I use three layers here and with the visuals, AR world, real world, and common, but you could get away with two and treat both being marked as true as common. Obviously, the player shouldn't be able to take off the mask while they're intersecting with a collision box in the real world. This is simple in Godot since we can use area 3D nodes around the colliders that only appear in one world as well as over the player. Conveniently, we only need to check this immediately after switching the mask and when another area 3D enters or exits the one attached to the player. Godot's signal system makes this simple. In the function itself, we just check if any of the overlapping areas exist in the other world. If they do, show the icon. If not, don't. Lastly, check if the player can swap before letting them. And with that, you have a simple implementation of the Vanny Masking Godot. Congrats! Yeah! On top of that, you can add simple effects like swaying the flashlight on each step, adding some fireflies in the real world, and changing the field of view based on how fast you're walking. Let me know what you would have added.